So you might remember a little while back that I did a video about the reveal, marketing video of Unreal Engine 5. I was super excited about it at the time. And I also did a video back in the day about Quixel and Unreal Engine coming together and the whole library of Quixel Megascans becoming free to Unreal Engine users. Well, now it's the time for me to really dive in and start experimenting with Unreal Engine 5 and see if they've delivered on their promises. The big promises they made was that Unreal Engine would now have real-time ray tracing and it would just make sense. They call it Lumen and the promise was that you could have fully dynamic lighting even with tons of polygons and it would be doing real-time ray tracing with color bleed and all the, all the elements of, of global illumination that make things look photorealistic. Okay, so I wanna test out Lumen. They had Nanite, which is some sort of technology they developed to make it so that they can have billions of polygons in a single scene and they don't need LODs anymore. It's, it just works even with super high poly geometry. And one of the things they were gonna use that Nanite technology with was the mega scan stuff. Okay, so this is where they photo scan things from the real world, they bring it in at super high quality and they promised at the cinematic quality, something you'd usually use for still shots or CPU rendering, whatever, it is but wouldn't work in real time we had to bring in the game version the, the dumbed down version well nanite gets rid of that but the mega scans was a big part of the equation so i wanted to check out all these things lumen nanite mega scans okay and see how they all work together so i'm gonna just jump into that start experimenting you'll see me experimenting with it and then at the end you'll see some of the results that i'm getting which i think are quite impressive so stay tuned for that and also make sure to subscribe while you're here because i'm going to be doing a bunch of things with unreal engine 5 trying to experiment i want to hear from you guys what you want me to experiment with and what kind of things are useful for you and of course i'm going to be trying to complete some ArcViz projects in the new Unreal Engine 5 with all these cool new features that we're going to talk about. Stay tuned to the end to see if my excitement remains and if I have high hopes for the future of Unreal Engine 5. Okay, at first when I open this, and you guys know I've, I've done quite a bit of UE4 before. You might have even taken a class from me on UE4. UE5 is a little different, but familiar, obviously. When I first opened UE5, I started with a open world level which i've never experimented with before but it can, it had mountains and it had terrain already in it so i started there and you'll see later i got a little confused about how everything works in that kind of level and so i changed it but right now i'm just experimenting with the mega scans bridge and the cool thing about mega scans bridge mega scan bridge right now is that it is just Part of this, you can just go to include in project and go to Megascans Bridge and it brings it right up and you can pick any of the objects you want and just import them. It used to be a third party thing, now it's built into UE5, which is awesome. And you can see some of these assets. Now the assets are photo scanned and extremely realistic. You can bring them in, you can import them as low poly, medium poly and some of them you can even do as nanite the super high poly stuff okay so that kind of replaces the cinematic version which is just crazy high poly photo scans and you can see mega scans has all sorts of stuff they have surfaces they have decal type things they call them atlases they have uh, so they have objects right 3d scanned objects full objects so i'm kind of using the uh the forest stuff trying to make a forest because eventually I want to do an ArcViz scene that's kind of a, a forest. If you've seen my environments course I want to try and recreate some of that stuff in here in UE4 because I think it'd be cool. So I'm using, I, I brought in a bunch of Megascan rocks and I added them to my foliage and then I'm just painting foliage around. Really it's just like the scattering mechanism within UE5 right? And you can scale it and rotate it and all that stuff. So I'm just trying to build up a forest floor. I'm using the material from Megascans. I'm not really loving the way it looks, especially because the tile is only two meters by two meters on that texture. So you see it a lot. So you kind of have to cover, put a bunch of ground cover in to, to make it work, right? The other thing about Megascans, and I've been, I've been asked this a lot by students on my previous videos about Megascans in, in Unreal Engine, and that is how do you use it for free? Well. It's pretty obvious now. You go into sign into Megascans Bridge and you just, it tells you sign in with your Epic Games account 
And for me, it said, well, you already have a Quixel account, a standalone one. Do you want to merge these two? And you do merge them. And then it says, okay, do you agree to only use the mega scans in Unreal Engine? And you say yes. And then you have full access to the entire collection, which is vast. There are all sorts of objects and things in here and they're all super high quality you can see here i'm painting kind of a ground cover on these clovers it's a basically 3d scanned leaves and stuff that are modeled into little clovers and i'm trying to paint the forest floor with it to cover up some of the tiling and the texture it's way too dense you know you can play with all those settings they were way too big for me too so I'm just experimenting here, just totally, I, I have never been in Unreal Engine 5 before, okay? So this is all actually new to me, but being in real time and uh, like Unreal Engine 4, for example, is not totally new to me. So it might be a bit more of a learning curve for some of you if you've never done this stuff before, but I just wanna demonstrate like, I want you to learn a little bit along with me and just experiment and see some of the things we're doing, but also see that anybody can get in here and start experimenting and also see some of the cool features, right? And just be aware of the kind of stuff you can do in Unreal Engine 5. Okay, so you can see now I switched levels and this is a basic level. And so really it just has a rectangular ground plane in here and it has the standard kind of skylight and sun set up, right? And so I'm just putting objects in here. At first, I'm just putting squares in and scaling them, which is a weird way to do it because the mapping will get strange, obviously. But I was just really trying to see how the global illumination is working. And to my, to my satisfaction, the Global illumination is actually working quite well. You can't tell too much yet because everything's kind of in direct light, but it is working. And you can see the lighting is dynamic here. So as I move the chair around, obviously the shadows are getting updated and everything. But you can see that eventually I'm gonna enclose this, this chair inside of a room a little bit. Here we go. So everything is being, well, a lot of the scene is being lit completely indirectly here. So there's just sunlight coming in through that window and it's kind of lighting up the whole room. You can see the, the soft shadow on the wall from where the chair is. And when I move it, it updates. I was checking the color bleed, turning the floor to red and seeing if it turns the whole room red. And indeed it does, right? You're getting light bouncing off the floor and up onto the wall. The chair is casting a, a huge soft shadow on the wall from that big that big window on the left of it, even though there's no direct light over there, right? So there's obviously global illumination and bounce going on here, which is awesome. I was messing with the atmosphere a little bit. I don't fully understand how to do this. I need to look into this a little more because it's different than what it was before. But it's similar to in V-Ray when you're giving the atmosphere more, more kind of color, more smogginess kind of. Uh, someone in the comments can explain more about how this works. I'm gonna go look it up and get more familiar with this system But it changes the colors of how the light is coming through so you can see how that is affecting the scene too and Eventually I get into a camera and start Adjusting it's kind of the post-processing settings And I kind of lost my lighting here for a minute. It came back eventually, but you can see this is kind of what it looks like without the nice global illumination going on right there. So after I went through UE5 and just kind of got into it and started fooling around, I figured out the, you know, Lumen is just kind of working automatically. You have to enable it. But other than that, it's just, you can see from the video that it's just, it's doing the color bleed. It's doing the global illumination stuff that it's supposed to do to make it look realistic. So the lighting just looks awesome and it's dynamic so you can move things around and it's updating in real time this is amazing so that blew my mind and then i was like okay well the other big thing the other big announcement about ue5 was the nanite which was frankly i don't understand how it works but it is supposed to be polygon independent like you can have some crazy high detail stuff in there and it doesn't really hurt you that much as far as processing power. 
I should mention too that Nanite doesn't use LODs. So no matter where you are in the scene, that thing is always super high poly. It doesn't like get really low poly as you walk away from it to try and save frame rate. It just is what it is. And you'll see from the video that it looks incredible, like so nice. And it doesn't degrade as you get farther away from it. So pretty awesome. Someone in the comments explained to me how this how this is possible. I don't get it. All I know is it looks super, super cool. So what I did was I went to the Megascans library again, and once I had Lumen figured out and I had a basic scene made, I was like, okay, well, let's, let's see what else we've got here. So I brought in, I brought in some Nanite stuff and I brought in a bunch of other things from Megascans library. Cause that's the other thing I really want to be checking out is the Megascan. And it's amazing. There is so much stuff in there. So in this next part of the video, you'll see how I went to the library, I brought in some assets that are Nanite, and some of them are Nanite enabled and some of them are not. But I brought in the Nanite versions of things, which is like the super high resolution version of some of the assets. And then I brought in some assets that just looked cool, but weren't Nanite. But you'll see that with this, so we've got real-time global illumination going on, and we've got these incredibly high poly photo scanned objects from mega scans that's just available for free for everyone it's awesome and you'll, you'll see what it looks like I, I brought that all into the scene and i just used the same scene and started looking around and in my opinion it looks incredible so let's check that out So because the video of my face always looks the same, like I'm zoning out like a zombie doing 3D, you probably can't tell that my mind was completely blown by UE5. And I'm saying that in all seriousness. I mean, they talk about real-time ray tracing as if it's the holy grail of 3D, and I've thought that for a long time. Once, once real-time graphics are so good that you know, it's basically indistinguishable from what we're usually doing on a CPU rendering in V-Ray, right? Once those two things are indistinguishable, then, then CPU rendering is dead, right? This is obvious. Real time is so amazing because the, the feedback you get, it's so fun as a creative artist. So my question for you guys is, is this, is this it? Is this going to be the future? Have we arrived at the technology that we need to truly embrace real-time graphics as our go-to tool for all the renderings that we do? So I think if it's not the step, it's definitely one of the steps towards that goal of never having to wait for a rendering again and just getting instant feedback at photorealistic quality. Okay, so you guys know my deal is Get your feet wet, get familiar with the UI, learn the basics, learn how to get around, and then immediately jump into a project. So I'm, this video is just me exploring and testing and just checking out what UE5 has to offer, seeing if they're delivering on some of the marketing stuff that they were talking about with Lumen and Nanite. And so far, my first impressions are this is, this is awesome. This exceeds my expectations for what's possible with real time. So you guys let me know what you think and let me know what you want to, want me to explore in there. But I'm going to dive into a project in the upcoming weeks and try to figure some stuff out in here and really do work towards finishing a complete project in here. So I want you guys to stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already, so you can see the, the upcoming videos that I'm gonna be making with UE5. And we're gonna really get into some good stuff.